So in the last video, we built a Power BI report um, based on data from various sources and we published that report to the Power BI service. So now in this video, we're gonna look at powerbi.com or the Power BI service and get a quick overview of what that looks like. So if you just type in powerbi.com, um, click on sign in. Now I've already signed in and you'll, you should see something similar to this. So in the top right hand corner, we have things like notifications and our settings, um, but most of the kind of really important features are on this left hand side uh, with this kick out panel. So favorites, as you'd expect, um, if you have content and you star that content, it will appear in your favorites. Uh, recent, recently used content, um, apps, apps are more around like purpose built um, dashboards and reports and you can get apps um, app can be things within your organization, so maybe others have kind of grouped up a whole bunch of reports and dashboards uh, for a specific purpose, uh, but they're also ready to go content, what was previously referred to as content packs uh, or third-party apps, um, developed either by Microsoft or third party themselves. So if you click on get data and services, you can see all these um, different apps. So if we click on say Google Analytics, there's some content dashboards and reports ready to go uh, consuming Google Analytics data and you, don't, you only need to kind of click get now and, and authenticate with your Google Analytics account for instance um, to benefit from that pre-built content. So really kind of um, you know, quick time to value. Um, but what we're gonna look at is uh, my, my workspace where I've deployed that report. So my workspace has these groupings of dashboards, reports, workbooks, like in the form of, these are kind of ex special data sets that are connected Excel workbooks and, and data sets that are backing our content. So we can see report 02, the data set, and report 02, the report, um, has been published um, from our previous video. So if I click on that, that will open up the uh, web-based experience of the report. So we have that forecast chart, as well as our summary report. Now, if I wanted to share that with others, I can click on share and add in um, email addresses from people within my organization or um, distribution groups. And you can see here we have the kind of long form URL. But um, if we go back to my workspace, one of the um, cool features of Power BI is the ability to generate uh, quick insights. So since my report has published at the report 02 data set, which represents those three data sources, the JSON document, the Excel spreadsheet, and the CSV file, Power BI has an ability to get quick insights. So if we click on get quick insights, Power BI will go off and run a set of sophisticated algorithms against that data to come up with uh, potential insights that we can pin to a dashboard. Um, so we'll wait for that to run. And now that that's come back, if we click on view insights, you can see here, um, as a user, I haven't actually created any of this content. Power BI has done this all for me. And if I scroll down, I can see all these quick insights. Now, some of them uh, may not be uh, like sensible, but you may pick up, depending obviously on the quality of the data and the columns that you're working with, um, some of these uh, visualizations might glean some insights that you may not have seen before and doesn't require any kind of development on, on our behalf, right? Power BI does it for us. So let's just pretend that, you know, these two, two of these charts um, are quite useful. Uh, we have the ability to pin, to pin a visual. So at the moment, we don't have a dashboard that's been built, but we can create a new dashboard specifically uh, for this visualization. So we'll call it crypto dashboard, click pin, we may want to pin one more, so we'll scroll down and find something else that's a bit interesting. Okay, so we'll pin this one as well oh, to existing. Okay, so that's so that's pinning vis um, visualizations from quick insights. If we go back to our workspace and go back to our report, we can pin visualizations from our report as well. Um, so maybe I want to pin the um, market share trend, so we'll pin that to that same dashboard and we'll also pin the candlestick so we'll pin that as well okay so if we go over to my workspace we can see the dashboard listed under dashboards uh, we'll open that up and you can see the tiles are starting to arrange themselves here so a dashboard is just a single page or in this instance really a single canvas um, of all these tiles that have been come from, uh, we've got some from the reports, we've got some from Quick Insights, 
um, and we can just move those around. So at the top, you can also see that there's this um, ask a question. So this is the Q and A feature of Power BI. Um, it's analyzed our data set and it's pulled some of the attributes out and we can ask questions of our data in a natural language. So, you know, what is the trend of, and as I type market share, Power BI picks up that that's a particular column in my data. So it might suggest um, some possibilities. So we'll click on market share. And because I've mentioned trend, um, you know, trends are typically best depicted in, in line charts. So it's automatically kind of chosen the right type of visual. So we can also pin that to our dashboard as well. Okay. So we've got a couple of visualizations going on now in our dashboard, all kind of from different um, different ways, whether it be Q&A, Quick Insights, or the report. Um, it can come also from other reports. So while one report is bound to one data set, which has multiple data sources, a dashboard can pin visualizations across multiple reports, which could come from multiple data sets, obviously. So the last tile that I want to add is a real-time live streaming tile. So at the moment, you, you know, we have data that we can import in terms of like the JSON document, the Excel spreadsheet. You can have live data using things like direct query where you can have queries sent to your data sources and, and queried in real time. Um, but streaming data is data that's coming through to our, uh, our dashboard um, as the data is, is happening in real time. So I've, I've pre-created an instance of a real-time streaming data set but if we click on add, um, you can see we can grab some stuff from an API, an Azure Stream or Pubnub. So if I go back, the streaming data set that I've created is Bitcoin price data um, as it's updating in real time using Stream Analytics in Azure. So if, as I've picked that data set, we've got the um, visualization types, so I'll say line chart. And this particular data set has only two attributes, so the date and the price and I can choose my tumbling window. So I'll say I want the last five minutes just to keep rolling with new data and we'll click next. We'll call this BTC price trend and click apply. And as the new data comes in, um, we'll see it animate in real time um, on the chart. So we just wait for the, you can see the new data point. If we open focus mode just to get a better view, as the data points come in, so this, this particular streaming data set it hap is happening every 10 seconds, but we're seeing the graph kind of redraw and, and animate as those new data points come in. So we'll just wait for one more. Yeah, we'll go back. So we've got a real time streaming data set. We've got stuff from Quince, Quick Insights, from Q&A, um, as well as, as the report. And that gives you just a quick overview of how to go from um, at the beginning, we had some our raw kind of data from disparate data sources. We ingested that into Power BI Desktop and used Power Query to model and enrich that data and, and make it into a kind of a readily uh, ready state for us to be able to report and ultimately create some visualizations which manifest themselves in a report which we published to PowerBI.com, our Power BI service that allowed us to not only view, view and consume that report, but also start to deep, you know, dive a bit deeper with the Q&A and quick insights and start to build out a, a view within a dashboard. So while that gives you a quick overview of the Power BI service, um, one last thing before we just wrap up is uh, Power BI Cortana and its integration with Cortana. So I'm not gonna go deep dive into um, how, how to build a Cortana visualization because um, that can be a video in and of itself. But really quickly, if you jump into um, a Power BI and we'll create a new page, and on the page size, you can see that you can create these uh, Cortana specific visualization cards. Now I've already pre-created one, so this is really just to show you what it looks like. So if I type in the keywords for my report, And if we click on tag on report, we can see the Power BI content directly within a Cortana card. And as you'd suspect, the visualization is still completely interactive um, as it would be on the Power BI service or on mobile or on the desktop. So that's it. So that's just a really quick overview end to end of how we can go from connecting disparate data sources modeling that using Power BI Desktop and Power Query, creating reports 
uh, and representing our data through visuals and then publishing our report or our PBIX file to the Power BI service to ultimately bring it all in together and, and kind of deep dive with quick insight Q&A and dashboard building and streaming tiles. So that's it.